Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be with you, isn't it? Well, now that we are half of June and it feels gloomy here in Los Angeles, I hope that your heart and your soul is bright and sunny. So today we're going to be talking about Father's Day that is coming up, father figures, and yes, even though as a certified clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, I work primarily with women as uh, the women's wellness expert, I do see a lot of men and young boys who come here for all kinds of um, treatments. So as a hypnotherapist, a lot of people say, now, why would anyone want to come and see a hypnotherapist or why would anybody want a coach? Uh, because I'm also certified as an action coach. So not every time do you have to go into hypnosis and we can have a dialogue to make a shift, as I call it, going from pain, whatever it's paining you, to gain aspect, to, to gain a lot of perspective about who you are, what you think, what you want in life, and have this clarity about your health and wellness plus your mindset. And we do a reset from the core, right? Which I call it a reset from the core set. So a little bit of humor in life will take you a long ways. Yesterday I sent an email uh, for my uh, th those who are on my mailing list talking about Father's Day and I've already had four gentlemen responding and saying what a great uh, newsletter it was. If you are following me by any chance, make sure that you prescribe to my YouTube channel. Plus, if you want, you can go to um, my website put your name, your email, you don't even have to put your name automatically, just your email and get on our mailing list because twice a month we send out information that it is informative, it is uh, inspiring, it is health, it's about my events and everything that is happening. So this message was about gentlemen, men, fathers, and believe it or not, I was talking about uh, the father figure to someone because not everyone has their father with them. I know I lost, I didn't lose, that's not true because I have to be cognizant of what I'm saying when I'm also helping my clients and you, my audience. My father died seven years ago and since then, actually a year, a year and a half later, I moved in with my mom, so to be with her, and I moved back into the same bedroom that was mine, that at the end of his life for the past 10 years, my father had occupied. And I remember walking in there the first time and having everything that was mine all situated. It was like I'm walking back into my room and then I realized, oh, one day I was in my room. I, I was supposed to talk about this, but I remembered when he was sick at the end and I sat next to him holding his hand and we started talking about a lot of things. Um, and one of the things that we talked about was his young times, how it was when he was young. And he was sharing that how life was so different for them, that they had more fun. And he was saying, we've, 
we've had better times and more fun and more joy than you are having nowadays. And he was worried that I don't have enough happy times, that I'm working a lot. And he was just worried and concerned because he knew his days were coming. And I said, it's okay. Because it was this beautiful father and daughter moment that was precious. And it seems when our parents get old, and I don't know where you are, if you, just like me, if you consider yourself the sandwich times, a lot of people do because they have children and then they have their parents. And so taking care of the children and parents eventually at an older age become very childlike, childlike and their needs. Plus, because they can't control a lot of things, like they can't drive and they get upset because all their life they've been in control. They had the key, right? The key to the car to go anywhere they wanted. And when the key is taken away from them or the car is taken away from them, they get quite agitated. And my father was not one of those. And I remember when he turned 90, he put the key on the counter and said, it's time for you to take care of the driving now. And will you take me everywhere? And it was, of course. Plus there was other means to have access and everything else. If you're in the state of California, there's so many ways to take care of the elderly. So they become sensitive, they become childlike, they become irritated, they become angry. And we have to remember, who is this person? Is this my father? Do you see your father? Do you see the men in your life as their title? You're supposed to be the provider. You're supposed to be the man of the house. You're supposed to be the caretaker. You're supposed to be the person who brings the bread or you're just another human being as sensitive as caring and there are days that you get angry you can't sleep you're agitated so a part of all this is how we as children look up to our father figures what we learn and yes not everybody respects or likes their father. Not every relationship is loving and that's a fact. And not every relationship is that it's respecting the father. But the love is when all that anger and resentment and everything is happening. Um, and I've seen this over and over with clients, with family members, it's like after they're gone, suddenly it's all that guilt factor. I didn't do this. Ah, uh, how come that person, my father didn't do this. My father didn't do that. All that resentment and anger. What if instead of all that, you give yourself permission to find ways to communicate and get to know your father as a person to find out what they like what they don't like something about their past that you didn't know and one of the things I remember I did growing up I was like a shadow to my father wherever he went I went I followed him everywhere and then as young women we grow up as teenagers and we shift some still are very connected to their father but we go in to starting dating and start communicating with the mother figure 
about feelings, about who we are, about the change in our own body, right? So having someone to communicate and understanding both ways, facts of life. And I don't know what your relationship it is with your father, but they too feel a lot of burden and expectations upon them. So a part of this is they go through anxiety. They're still sensitive and they feel it. It's just that they have not been taught how to show their feelings. And especially when they go into, if they've lost something and they are grieving, uh, they usually shut down, shut down their feelings. Most of my clientele that come in here, gentlemen who come in here, they come for panic and anxiety, insomnia, or that inkling of, I have not completed, I have not done so, and the expectations that rise upon them. That automatically puts them in a place when they feel a lot of pressure to take on uh, habits or behaviors that becomes more negative. Um, I know one of my clients who came in and he was like, my way out is to go gamble. So gambling became a time and a place for him to leave the house and distract himself. And to a point that he wanted to stop it, he didn't know how to stop because even when we have a negative habit, if the negative habit is satisfying, if it is feeding something which in turn feels good, even if it is from, away from home, away from work, away from the daily challenges and expectations, we stay in that negative habit because we're getting something out of it. So why do and when do people go to a therapist, to a coach, is first, they need help. Second, they are ready for the change. As a therapist um, and coach, as a hypnotherapist, I am not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist. I want to make sure that is uh, in place as a certified clinical hypnotherapist, one of the things is we deal with the subconscious level. So a part of the hypnosis, guided visualization, taking a client into a trance factor, it's only to tap into the subconscious level, to the subconscious mind, so we can understand the cause, the trigger of what caused what was the trigger to wanting a new behavior, a new challenge, okay? So once that is understood, acknowledged, then it becomes easier to shift and change a behavior. It can be gambling, cheating, drinking, smoking, and all those are still, no matter what the action, the causation, is an emotional connection to the action. So that's what we do. When someone comes in here with panic and anxiety, heart palpitating, um, let me give you another example. Today, I went to the doctor's office. I had to pull the muscle. So for the last five days, I've been dealing with a little bit of a pain, right? And for me to say I have discomfort and pain, it's a lot because I have high tolerance of pain. I can manage pain, I can overcome pain factor, and the same way as I do hypnosis and with no anesthesia for root canals, I've done seven of them. And so this, the first two days was very excruciating, but I did my self-hypnosis 
manage the pain to a point that I can function fully. So he's checking and he says, your heartbeat is 54. Your blood pressure is very low. I see you have a history of low blood pressure. And when I'm saying low, that means my blood pressure is normally between 95 over 55, okay? Instead of the other way around. My heartbeat was 54. And he says, are you an athlete? I said, no. He says, do you exercise? How many hours a day do you exercise? I do not. But I know how to bring my blood pressure down, how to regulate it, how to regulate. And for years I have through my meditation, the way I do my work, automatically I have brought that level to a point that this is where I function. And the same goes with the fluctuation of blood pressure and pain management. So if I can do it, and if I can teach my clients, I can also guide and teach you to regulate your pain level, your blood pressure, your anxiety level. And that's one of the things most of my clients who come in here, gentlemen, come in because of stress factors, anxiety, insomnia, and negative habits that they want to change. I've hardly had any gentlemen come in here for weight reduction. They're not as conscious or self-conscious about their weight, most men, as we are as women. So do you understand when I'm talking men until they don't hit obesity or they're on this fitness, okay, aspect of it, if they are fit, if they are exercising and everything, they're not here to manage their weight. And when it gets to the obesity, they take care of themselves in a different way or they haven't managed it. So we as women look at weight as a more superficial as what is being shown, whereas men look at weight as a health factor. And I'm not saying women are not health conscious, but it is more of a body image. So back to gentlemen and fathers, anxiety, anger, and they can trigger and affect their health. Stress is a health factor. Anxiety is a health factor. So it would be, it behooves us as children to look at our parents and our father and to see another aspect of them. That underneath what we see, there is a human being with sensitivity, with love, with care, and yes, with some angers, resentments, and stress factors, everything. They just handle it differently. So communicating with them, questioning them. You know, my newsletter that went out, this was one of the responses. Morning, Lisa. Just a note to tell you that the article newsletter you sent below is wonderful and so full of truth and on many levels. We have been blessed to with wonderful children and many grandchildren and about to be great, great grandparents in August. They all let us know of their love. Thank you again for not only this article, but your past services which, which enriched my life blessings and I love you. Thank you for this newsletter, George. So the newsletter talks about how, who comes for hypnotherapy 
and how men are not as clear as understanding their emotions. Sometimes we have to extract it. And many of them who go through stress factor experience symptoms as anger, aggression, pain in the body, which is psychosomatic, digestive problems, which is the digesting of life, whatever it is going, because it's from the outside and they have not learned how to speak about, women talk about their emotions, men go and do something with it. They either go fishing for them or they are with their buddies at a cigar smoking and they sit and have a cigar time and wear with the whiskeys or they go golfing or they do something to get their stress out. Women love to go shopping and do their self-care, get their massages, or talk to a friend. Women love to share stories, right? So men also get to have this risky behaviors, negative behaviors, feeling unexcited about things, and they might even go into depression. And yes, trouble having sleeping. So how I said you can help them, show that you are grateful. Have a cup of tea, cup of coffee. You know, we talk about couples having date nights. When was the last time you had dinner with your parents? When was the last time you had half an hour just sitting, maybe not even speaking? About watching TV together, watching sports with your father, and genuinely, like I did with my dad, every time we would sit in the car, mom was always in the back, my dad was next to me, and I would just hold his hand in the middle, counsel, and it, it was a ritual. I would drive, and I would hold my dad's hand just for a moment, and then I would release it so I can get back on driving. But that like one minute or two minutes of holding his hand or placing my hand on his hand was just a gesture of, I've got you. I love you. I'm with you. And that's all they want from us. And that's all we can give them as children because we can get angry at them as much as they get angry with others. But genuinely being grateful, good or bad, this is the life we chose. This is the parents we have. We don't have to like everything about them. But we do deep inside as much as they love us, love them. So I hope today's message was beneficial to you because sometimes we have to validate their pain and give them positive reinforcement that in this world of chaos and challenge and expectations, they do matter as much as we do. Thank you very much for being a part of today's episode. And if you are celebrating Father's Day or you have a gentleman in your world, say thank you as I thank you. God bless you and may the universal light surround you. See you next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.